Hey Liam, the file size was too big, so I had to upload it as a YouTube video. Here's the link, okay. So we're going to be reacting to some of your enclosures that you've submitted. Now I have about a dozen or so, but just know that I'm not going to mock anything, so you don't <coughs> have to feel like worried about what I'm going to say, I'm not going to do that. And if you want to submit one for the next video, just feel free to email me at reptilesandresearch at gmail.com. With that being said, let's start looking at these. Okay, I know, I know who this person is, and... I know the enclosure and I know this snake because I've we've chatted about this before so this is for a um, indigo snake now I'm very very jealous of this snake but this enclosure I like it a lot because look right look people are gonna say like oh it's not bioactive it's not bioactive it doesn't need to be bioactive it just needs to be a complex environment and that's what he's achieved if you look over here the far side i have my mouse over right here. You can see he's got a basking light, probably a halogen I suspect, and he's got a basking platform. Now that looks like either tile or slate or something. Now that's gonna obviously heat up when you get a nice, nice hot basking surface temperature. Now the snake can get belly heat from that, or they can get the radiation from the bulb above. Now what's interesting is it looks like the snake can get under that as well. So. It has the choice of being hidden and receiving heat, or outright basking in the radiation. Now that's really important because um, when you start thinking about choice, the snake has the choice to do either. So not only does he have habitat complexity, but he also has humidity variation. People say like, oh, a uh, you know a rack replicates a burrow. Well, burrows are like, yeah, burrows are high humidity, so. What he's done there typically does replicate a burrow, a high humidity environment that's dark, compact, and they feel like they're underground. Whereas in a rack, people say it replicates a burrow, but then they're also like trying to keep it bone dry for certain species as well, and like it just doesn't replicate a burrow. You know, people will say like, oh, these species like it dry, and if you offer them any like amount of humidity long term, they're gonna you know, get a respiratory infection. And that's fine, I agree. If they can't get away from that high humidity environment, then yes, but doing it in this way, if they want to leave that environment, they can. Like, it's what happens in nature, it's what should happen in captivity. With an indigo, they distract everything, so he's done what he can with what an indigo is gonna do with the setup, basically. What I would do, though, is I would just add some branches and allow it to climb a bit, but it's nothing major, is it? Just chuck a branch in, but other than that, like, it's a good setup. I like it a lot. And I know the person that submitted this is like really on board with what this channel's about, what I believe, and what everyone that watches believes as well about pushing forward and better care. And you know, I just want to say thank you, mate. He does support me on Patreon. Like, not only does it say you know I believe in what you're saying, but it also says like I believe in you as well, and that you can actually try and make change if you can get there. And I know, I don't know, I'm waffling, but I'm just trying to say I appreciate it, basically. This one is of my bioactive hognose enclosure. The snake's name is Medusa. Okay, so lots of ventilation here. That looks like a fan. And I really like that because it just shows how that this person is thinking about circulating air in the enclosure and getting fresh air in there. And also that is going to help with not only locking in the humid layers beneath, but it's also going to dry out the air and the surface layer for the hog nose, which is perfect because if it digs down, moisture beneath, dry above, what happens in the wild essentially, so it's, I like it a lot. Okay, so we can see what's going on here now. So we have a log for him to climb, people say hog noses don't climb, well, they do. I've seen them climb, I've worked with hog noses, I've seen them climb like substantially more than, than a log, so it's fine, it does exactly what you'd want in habitat complexity and getting those muscles working to do more than just move from left to right essentially. So you've got the halogen there, we have like a rock here which is going to warm up, absorb all that in for a day and then as the day goes on and the lights turn off it's going to start releasing all that infrared sea that's been absorbing throughout the day and that hog nose if it wants to during the night can come sit on this warm rock. The only thing I would do is to just make sure that some of the more visible light is around this halogen because you really want to pair that visible light with the heat essentially. Now 
I was talking to Dylan from the Animals at Home the other night, and he was saying that his jungle carpet python really, really, really likes to bask under the jungle dawn because it's associating high light with, you know, UVB and heat. And so if he takes away the jungle dawn and moves it, the snake will actually move towards the jungle dawn and actually leave the halogen without realising. So it's really important that we don't confuse them and make sure we, like, pair it all up together, essentially. We're never going to get separate wavelengths in nature. It all comes down in one, like, beam of sunlight. It's all together. So when we're doing it in captivity, we need to just remember that it all needs to be one patch of sunlight, essentially. But, you know, other than that, that is, I, I like that a lot. It's really good. Hey Liam, the file size was too big, so I had to upload it as a YouTube video. Here's the link, okay. You twat. <laughs> oh my god. I can't remember just called Rick Roll. What was it, 2013? Well done. <laughs> well done. Jesus. <laughs> oh. Mugged me right off. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> just, just the difference between night and day. Okay, so look, there's live plants here, but then you're also using like dead plants, which is really cool because I do that as well. Basically, just like cut down some like dry grasses that I have and then tie them together with a piece of like, um, what's it called? Just, just cotton thread, really. Tie it together and just plonk it in the ground. I mean, then it dies, but it dies to all together and it looks like a dead bush. And it really does help that like arid effect. And I really like it. It's really cool. Look how complex this environment is. You can tell I'm getting excited over this because I'm talking way too fast. Look how complex this environment is. You can get under, climb up. Like, you must not see that leprechaun for like ages. Like, it's perfect. All those rock crevices. So that's going to heat up under the halogen because I think it's lit up. So I'm assuming it's a halogen. And I know this person, so I know she is using a halogen and UV and stuff, like, with with chat rock quite regularly. So, I know for a fact that this is probably a halogen, and it's just going to warm up all these rocks here. And not only is it going to warm up the surface of these rocks, but these little crevices down here that the leprechaun can get into is going to warm up too. So it's really, like, replicating what they would have in nature. Oh, wow. Look at that. Look at that. That is... I would be so proud if I had that. That is a really nice enclosure. Yeah, so you've got the halogen there, and you've got you've got UVB. I know I know they have UVB. But look at it; it's brilliant. What's interesting though is that there's going to be like a dry area here, but this round here, around the roots and stuff, around the base of these plants, is going to be like a high high humidity area. So not only can it dig down to like high humidity if they want, and leopard geckos do like humid hides. We know that. It's just like you tick all the boxes. Yeah, I really like this. I mean, what can I say apart from like you've smashed it? Like, <laughs> so next person. Right, we have a message here. Hello, I'm Wolfie, and I should open this email by saying that I really appreciate your channel. Thank you, and it helps me a lot in explaining to my friends and family how the reptile husbandry works, and that's awesome. Here in Romania, Romania, that's cool, I like that. The reptile hobby is not as advanced, but we're making progress. You said in a community post to send our setups. This is my terrarium for my baby bearded dragon named Ray. We're currently working on his adult enclosure. Being at the base design and figuring out where it would fit best, that's surprisingly tricky in an apartment. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can relate to that. Best wishes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so, baby bit of dragon, straight away I see allowing it to express some of its semi-arboreal tendencies, and I think that's really cool. Especially at the younger age, they are more semi-arboreal. Got your little hammock there, which allows it to climb. You got the halogen at the top right, that's fine. The UV is like across the entire length, but like you said, you're working on the final enclosure and this is temporary. I can see that it's temporary from like the um, the paper on the floor. So it's not like a big deal. Like It can hide and can get away from the UV. It doesn't... It has the option to not be in UV really. So it's not a massive concern. 
as long as you know that, that up here, it's not at a UVI that's like extremely high, I reckon you're fine. You should definitely like submit to the next video so we can see what his like full on enclosure looks like. That's gonna be really cool. Okay, next one. Okay, we have an email, text. Okay, so, hello Reptiles and Research. I hope you're doing well. I tried to find your name, but I couldn't. My name is Daniel. I've just discovered your channel and I'm really loving it. Thank you for your effort and time to educate us better about reptiles. Specifically snakes, we really appreciate it. I'm really new to the hobby and actually this is my first ever pet. She's a Mexican black king snake. Oh, Mexican black king snake. And I got her in September. She's now six months old. I just want to share my terrarium. It's 60 centimeters by 30 by 30. So, so two by one by one. Hoping it could inspire more beginner reptile lovers like me. I built my terrarium background based off one of JTB Reptiles videos. So this is cool because I like that. Let me just tell a story here. I know I'm like interrupting, but when I first started the channel, I, I had this idea that like all these channels on, on YouTube, they're like trying to compete with each other and they're like trying not to like give each other views and they're trying not to help each other because they're like trying to clamber over each other and get to the top. And I had it in my head like, what if people just banded together and actually supported each other and cared more about the information than actually about themselves and like making it big or whatever so I had it in my mind that I was going to create this Facebook group and I was going to message individual channels that I thought were really good and did things based on science and did things based on evidence and it was just after I went on the Animals at Home podcast that I messaged Dylan and I said like, what do you think about this idea and he was like yeah it's a great idea so we did that and the first person we messaged was um was JTB Reptiles so we messaged Joe and Joe pied me off for like three days and I had to message one of our mutual friends to tell him to like to like reply to me. Now he says that he never saw it nowadays, but you know, Joe, I know you pied me off. <laughs> so yeah, and then we started like other people that we liked and started added ping pool. And now we've got this really nice group of people that support each other. We like st we share like stats on Facebook. We're in videos of each other's videos and we're just you know, it's working really well and I'm so glad that like I had the idea to begin with and like people actually responded to me because at the time I was, I was like I don't want to say I'm a nobody I was a nobody because I'm a nobody now like but I didn't have like a channel or anything I just like was some without any subscribers and messaged them was like well hey we should do this and you know most people will be like well I've got nothing to gain from you because you've got no subs that I can like get views from and we can like anyway so I appreciate that people like like took the chance on me to like engage with me I suppose but yeah so I love the fact that people are watching like Joe's videos and collectively as a group we are helping you know about UVB I'm convinced now that she would benefit from it but I'm not sure it's completely necessary in my case since the terrarium is cl pretty close to the window and she gets sunlight during the day glass filters out UV so you you will get like all the UV hit your window but as soon as it hits that glass the UV stops going through and only the visible light and infrared goes through so yeah the only way you're going to give that to your animal is actually giving them a bowl with the enclosure so but I can see why people do think that because it wouldn't make sense they're getting light and sunlight contains UV but no you know, glass filters it out, so. I use a mixture of cocoa fiber for substrate because it looks more natural and it holds the burrows really well. I agree. For the hides, I have big stones, a video below. And some parts of the wall, the warm side. I also have an empty coconut and parts of the wall, the cool side. And basically the entire background wall is a huge playground. That's cool. I'm excited to see this now. Thank you so much for your time and I hope my terrarium makes it to your videos. You're in the video, mate. Um, have a good day and stay inspired to make more informative videos. I hope you reach more people soon. I'm liking doing this video. Like, it's such a like. I know people like support me and stuff anyway, but you'd be surprised at how much abuse I get over this. And it's just nice to like see things like this. It's just nice. Jesus. Okay, so. So how about that complexity, basically, you've, you've just hit it out of the park, like, the ability to climb in there is perfect, 
Um, you said a heat emitter, so is that a ceramic or is it a? I'm, I'm going to assume you mean a ceramic heat emitter because I can't tell. It looks white, so I'm assuming it is. But yeah, habitat complexity. You smashed it. There's a billion places to hide. Light and dark substrate that allows it to burrow. You said about it locking in humidity, so obviously you're concerned about it being moisture down below. So you've got that variation in humidity. Like it's it's really good. Oh, lovely little king snake. So here is the king snake, just draped over the logs, which is funny because mine does that too, just drapes over everything. Normally she does it under the UV, so. It's, see, look, king snakes, people say all they do is want to hide, but clearly, clearly yours is actually using the, your enclosure. It's, it's until people that actually, like, give an elaborate enclosure to them, they realise that, yeah, like, this animal wants a complex environment. See, look at this tail here. This tail is gripping that branch. They say king snakes can't climb or whatever. People say they, they, they don't climb. Well, look, look. Look how well it's climbing this branch. Like, I'm sorry, but until you actually put an animal in a complex environment, people don't people don't realise, but I can see that like, you've smashed it. Okay, so I really like this enclosure. The one thing I would say is, obviously, UVB. I would always say UVB for snakes. Or even, like, a halogen instead of the ceramic but uh, what you could do is that you could cut a section out of that lid and then glue like fly mesh or screen mesh to it so it's obviously added ventilation and it also you can just put the bulb across that as well then so that's something that I would probably recommend okay next person hi Liam I hope all is well and I thought I would send some better pictures over to you for, of our recent build for you to use in your viewers enclosures video if you like running a 60 watt pro rep bulb a 24 watt 16 percent arcadia t5 a 15 watt jungle dorm natural substrate mix of topsoil play sand coconut husk orchid bark and leaf litter branches inspired by jtb's red enclosure so that's red is joe's uh corn snake so i know exactly what this is going to look like Snake is only just over a year old, so she has lots of room to play around with and seems to be loving it. In the old vib, she was on a ceramic heat emitter and shade dweller, which worked, but I'm happy to swap over to a heat bulb. Plenty of inspiration from your channel, JTB and Annals at Home, plus of course Julie and Claire from Wrigley's, who has been fantastic with all our reptiles, all purchased from him. Happy for you to use if you want to. Well, thank you. I know I know who I know this person. I talk to him quite regularly, and he's also a Patreon supporter. And I appreciate like having the faith in all of us actually to be doing something good and obviously wanting to support me in particular. Oh, wow, I like it. Okay, so you've got your halogen on the left. You've got the rock pile beneath that, and a hide I can see beneath that right there. So not only can the snake bask on top of those rocks, but also has the choice to be in heat but hidden as well. So you're allowing greater choice by doing that, and I really like that. You've got the shade dweller up there, the jungle dawn is probably behind the lip of this. I can see the lights there. You know, life plants, it looks great. Leaf litter, ability to actually climb, like it's, it's just a great enclosure all around. I can see Joe's influence like this how he's put it on the wall. I can see that, that's pretty cool. Right, next picture. Yeah, all these cork rounds as well, they're only gonna help add to the security needs of the snake as well. And I really like that. And also those plants are gonna have like a humid microclimate around the roots and stuff as well. So I'm loving doing this video because like, sometimes like you can make videos and you feel like no one's listening, but then you see this and you're like, it is worth doing and it is worth just like keeping on that treadmill and trying to help and try and help as many people and their animals as possible you know it's just oh, I've got that I've just got that feel good feeling right now here's an example of the corn snake receiving heat but not actually out in the open and it has the choice of both and I really like that oh look at that so not only are these branches actually like allowing shade in the other half but also a lot of complexity and the ability to climb on that and they can also get up and you know bask on the logs like that corn is going to love that setup and it's really going to grow into that as well and not only is 
the ability to climb going to help the animal grow by strengthening muscle and developing proper muscle because it's being using it not just sat in a rack just like just sat there but also like the UV with corns especially there was that study that I shared in a video ages ago where I said that the bones in corns was more ossified than those that didn't have UV compared to those that did so like what can I say like you're just smashing it nothing but praise nothing but praise yeah really like this enclosure mate it's really smart and I'm ho I hope your daughter loves it as much as I do and I'm not even involved with it I just look at it and I love it so I'm hoping she's really like enjoying the corn and actually let her seeing the corn be a corn you know and it's so cool as well because this person like gets his kids to watch my videos and then talk talks to them about it after and they actually completely understand what I'm on about and they can say okay we need to change this just this these are kids so you know there are there's some adults that watch my videos and go he doesn't know what he's about what is he even talking about so the fact that kids understand everything that I'm talking about and I'm sure he does explain them explain complex things to them in his own way that makes sense to his kids as well but it just shows you you know Hopefully these get into reptiles and they're just another person that understands welfare and understands how to properly care for an animal. I'm trying to get emotional on one of these posts. <laughs> okay, cool. Next one. Message. Hey Liam, I thought I'd send across some images of my garter snake. It's in a 4x2x3 by by and I just moved to him in a few weeks ago. I need to sort out the heating and get a dimming thermostat, but I'd love some more advice if you have any. I tried my best to add somewhere for the snake to swim, as I know they like to do that in the wild. Kind regards. Okay, cool. Straight away, I can see that options to climb. You've got the jungle dawn. You said you've got the halogen, so or the UV. Sorry, I don't know what that is, but options to be up high there. Substrate they can burrow in. Hides they can dig under. Actual decent amount of water there for them to get in. Yeah, like just, it's just clutter everywhere, and it really adds to the security of the animal. And I, I like that. It just, it does the job. It does what it says on the tin, basically. Really good setup. I like it. So it can get up there. I think that is a that is an LED. That is, I think that is a um, UVB bulb. Yeah, it can just drape across this and bask if it wants to. You know, garters are pretty diurnal, so there are a lot of keepers that will give them like halogens and stuff, but. That they'll also not provide it for other species because they think that they're not diurnal, so they don't need it. But it's just about choice, you know. And I think I think you've smashed it, mate. I think you smashed it. Um, only thing that I would do potentially is maybe add a jungle dawn, just to bolster that visible light spectrum. Because at the moment you've got, you know, the infrared spectrum from the halogen. You've got the UV spectrum from the UV bulb and then you just want to really just bulk out that visible light spectrum in the middle with a LED really. Right next picture, oh look at that, see I, I really like, I'm, I'm a really big fan of the North American reptiles and like there's so many things that I would love to keep, like guard snakes especially, the, the, and also a banded water snake is something that I would really like to keep as well but I would just want to give like a really big water area. I don't know, maybe one day, maybe one day if the channel actually takes off and I can actually build like a like really good reptile room, because that is my plan. I plan on having a really big reptile room one day, showcasing all the commonly kept species, but keeping them really well. And like, I want to keep like ball pythons in like a six foot long, six foot high, like go all out for the species that you keep, you know, and really showcase that these animals aren't like afraid of like larger enclosures and stuff it's just and then I'll, but I also want like a separate room to start start doing like experiments and start writing studies and stuff so I really want reptiles and research to start doing more but for that I need like the finances that comes with channel size really but again I'm going into another rant but yeah really nice enclosure mate and they're really good looking guys as well this is Jasper's vivarium. He is an eight months old corn snake and the vivarium is 45 inches by 19 by 17. He has been in here since he was around four months old and he really enjoys the space. His favourite napping spots <laughs> his favourite napping spots are inside his tree and his sky hide. In the future I plan to switch to a deep soil based substrate and upgrade to at least a four by two by three vivarium. 
before he gets to adult size. Thanks for looking. Well, thank you for submitting. I really want to look at these enclosures. Okay, first picture. Okay, cool. Straight away, I can see that looks like a bit of slate down there. Um, the reason I'm moving side to side is because I'm trying to lean past the microphone because it's visually blocking me at some point. So I'm not just like swaying. <laughs> so you've got the halogen and you've got the slate beneath. Perfect. I know you said you want to move to a soil-based substrate. But for now, even that that substrate is allowing like those digging behaviours. Yes, it's not allowing pockets of humidity and a humidity gradient throughout the soil, but it is allowing them to dig, so I would yeah, I would do the same. I would upgrade and do what you want to do, but what you're doing now isn't awful. Next picture. Bulbasaur, okay, you win. You just win. The sky hide's really cool, and that, I'm actually gonna. I think I want to do this myself. I want to do a sky hide because it just adds more, doesn't it? I can't get over Bulbasaur. I just, I just like it. It's cute. But you can see, like, just got a deep heat projector there and a um, halogen. Complete habitat complexity, areas to climb. A sky hide. It can just disappear into all that clutter at the back. Like it's it's a really good it's a really good corn setup. Like people think that because we're advocating for best care, that everything must be bioactive. And all we care about is bioactive. No, all I want is to be everyone to start thinking about functionality, and complexity, and what that actually does to the animal and things like that. And you you, you smashed it. I mean. The good thing is, I'm saying this to everyone today, so I'm glad that I can just say you smashed it to everyone. I'm kind of concerned that someone's going to submit a rack to me now, and I'm going to be like, <laughs> Okay, next person. So we've just got a video here, so we'll just, we'll just play the video. So really nice looking arid setup. Hog nose. I'm just going to pause it before it ends. Right, I can see now that that very that really does look JTB inspired with that pond liner around the base, and I really like that. It allows. I like the fact that you, you can see elements of all of us coming together and people's setup, so people are taking on board what each of us are saying, and I really like that. You know, hognose, the species that people say like need a burrow and be do best in racks and all this nonsense. But look at that habitat complexity. It can climb, it can get under, it can burrow. Look how dark it is down behind that rock. Well, that behind that wood, sorry. The leaf litter, like you've just you just smashed it. Like I'm assuming you have UV. Yeah, I'm gonna assume there's UV there or a jungle door. The only thing that I would do is that I would actually swap that deep heat projector for a halogen. Okay, next one we just have the one image. There's, there is some aspects of have the complexity. You've got loose substrate. You know they can dig if they want to, whatever it is. They can get under and hide. There are some elements of habitat complexity in there, and you got to think that study on the black rat snakes. All that made that massive change in like cognition and growth was like very, very, very little. So the more you add, the more like there's probably a glass ceiling at some point. But yeah, you've already added more than what they added in that study to that to those black rat snakes so your animal's going to thank you for well not going to thank you for it but your animal's going to be in a better off place cognitively for that for sure meridian reptiles first enclosure is my gray rat snake enclosure it measures 48 by 21 by 48 there's a full spectrum led light as well as a halogen basking light and uv live plants and bioactive substrate i'm planning on adding cork buck tubes when i can get hold of some Second will eventually house a couple of small dart frogs. It measures 12 by 12 by 18. It consists of some Malaysian driftwood and various mosses, currently on only LED. This is my f future Procacia enclosure. It measures 12 by 12 by 18. Custom DIY rocks and life plants. Bioactive substrate, only LED until one. Until I introduce the chameleon. The enclosure has been cycled with our animals for over a year now. Holy. Okay, well that is ready. <laughs> Fourth is my crypto, I don't know what species is, Cryptobulifarius kiensis enclosure. 
It measures 18 by 18 by 28. High basking light and UVB. Last is my leopard gecko. Okay. If you do give me credit, can you do it under my business name, Meridian Reptiles? I also have a Facebook page under that name for anyone that might be that might want to follow along with my builds and such. So check out Meridian Reptiles. Ooh, okay. So this is a hell of a lot of moss. This is super cool. This is basically what I wanted to do for my um, my moss mantis enclosure, which my moss mantis enclosure looks nothing like that bioactive. It is that that's fantastic? Like it looks amazing. Like that that is beautiful. Like that is like zoo level. If you saw that, you'd be amazed by it. Like I can't really critique or say anything. That's amazing. If you smashed it. It's like complex to the back left, dark areas. The only thing I would say is that you've got a really, really open space at the front. Uh, I know at one point you said you were going to add cock tubes, so maybe that's that, but like, I can't really criticize that too much because look at that, that looks like a slice of the jungle. Again, looks like a cliff rock wall with plants growing up it, halogen, UVB, all that good good stuff. Leaf litter, like you, you, you've just smashed it, you've just smashed it. That That is amazing. That is amazing look, look habitat complexity leaf litter climbing halogens up top uvb gray rat snakes looking like I, I can't criticize this like maybe add some clutter at the bottom but other than that it's it's, just, it's good it's good like smashed it again now that 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 is really cool so that's creeping fig i think i've got this in the enclosure which is actual camera is like sat on but yeah this looks like genuine genuinely looks like a slice of nature like the rock wall looks brilliant like i wish i had that ability to make it look like that like it your enclosures are basically art mate like they're just i i, I can't really say anything really because it's just it's just so good I think all your enclosures are brilliant and I don't think you need my advice whatsoever so there's <laughs> not much really I can say. Okay next one. I've got a message. Hi probably too late for you but please see my enclosure for honey my real python. Noodle, my, okay my Instagram is at honeynoodle2020. I'll put that on the screen somewhere. Honey has a 4x2x2 enclosure. Built for her in glass lined base so I can keep the humidity correct. Uh, she has a ceramic heat emitter, four hides, logs, UVB, and you can see in the video she does bask in it. She's a good eater, never misses a meal, and actually comes forward demanding food, which is outgoing for a royal. She's my first royal, I have another one in quarantine, so hopefully I have a reasonable setup for her. Many thanks. Uh, there's a YouTube video, okay, so we've got a YouTube video to watch as well. Again, it's cluttered, there's climbing up a tree. Isn't it funny how I say, I say royal to send me a boreal, and then people say, oh no, no, don't, no, don't, no, don't. Literally, the one log in there, and she wants to sit at the highest point, because they, they want to climb. They do, that's what they do. So, habitat complexity, yeah, really good. I like how you've got something in front of it to add a little bit more security of the glass as well. Um, I would definitely say maybe you could add some more branches in there because I know she will climb. If you give her the opportunity, she will climb. Maybe do what maybe do what others have done and take some inspiration from what Joe at JTB Reptiles is doing with the logs coming out of the wall. Or maybe even a sky hide like others are doing for their corn. I'm going to do it and I think a royal would really appreciate the sky hide as well. Let's look at the YouTube video. If this is another Rick roll, I swear to God, I am not... <laughs> If I get Rick rolled again, I'm not. <laughs> For God's sake. Okay. Okay, so it is actually a royal one, not Rick Astley. <laughs> yeah, you got habitat complexity. You look great. They've got the ceramic there. And I like what you've done. You've put stuff on the glass to make her feel more secure. I completely understand why you've done that now. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, really like it. You can see that the snake wants to climb. You're already ahead of the vast majority of people that keep 
raw pythons really. A lot of people just shove it in a box. So one video from this person. Okay, so let's watch that. Okay guys, so first of all, I'm gonna just start with my Greenhorn Mountain Dragon Mushu. So as you can see, these little white dots in here are the springtails. So if I zoom in on here, that is what they are. Okay, so they, you know, on first glance, they look like mites. Now they aren't mites, they're actually little, you know, clean up crew critters. So what they do is they take all of his poop and they recycle it back into the soil so that these live plants uh, get the nutrients. And as a result, you can see at the back there, they're absolutely booming. So I'm really happy with how this setup uh, is going. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just top up his water uh, and then I'm also gonna feed him. So if you're a bit squeamish, you wanna look away now because we're gonna feed him some live insects uh, as well. Yeah, I mean, you understand the whole process of bioactivity. This is a zookeeper, by the way. I know this person is. Complex environment, opportunities to climb. I think you've got halogen and UV. I can't really tell from the video, but like, there's not much that I can say to you, really. I, I think you know what you're doing. You could probably go for a larger enclosure, but that's the same as all of us. We could all go for a larger enclosure, so. Yeah, it's a nice enclosure. Last but not least, I'm hoping my camera doesn't die, so. You'd think that this picture was taken outside, like, this person has such a. I know who this person is, they have such amazing setups, like, there's literally nothing. Look at it! It's bloody amazing! This looks like this is generally outside, and it's taken, like, someone was herping. Next picture. I, I, there's literally nothing I can say. Look how amazing this is. Habitat complexity, you know, humid microclimates, got a basking spot as well UV dark areas what can I what can I what can I even say like you don't need to go for me to advice whatsoever like you have absolute like I'm so jealous of this enclosure like so look basking area here UV halogen this warms up it can bask on this if it wants but it can also go under these areas and get different temperatures while still be hitting there's n so what he's done here is he's actually like layered rocks up around a plastic hide and he's like disguised it and it looks fantastic that's going in the thumbnail that is the thumbnail image i don't care that's beautiful and that was the last of submissions the camera is about to die so i just want to say thank you to everyone that submitted if anyone wants to submit their enclosures for another video to do one of these please do reptilesandresearch at gmail.com